Hello friends, welcome back once again. I'm Mike with Wellforged Miniature Painting, and this video is part one on a series on how I painted the Lord of Malice from Creature Caster. If you want this miniature for yourself, check the description below for a link to their website. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and check out the social media links on the screen. If you'd like to support me, I do have Amazon affiliate links in the description below showing the equipment that I used to paint this beast. I do get a small kickback from Amazon if you use these links at no extra cost to you, so it's a great way to get some awesome mini painting equipment and support the channel at the same time. With all that being said, let's get started. First, I had to come up with a color scheme. I ran a Twitter poll a few months ago to gauge what colors people would choose from a list. Purple and green ended up tying for first. Originally, whichever color won was going to be the main color of the Lord of Malice. But since there was a tie, I decided to use both colors. So I assembled the mini and took a picture of it, then decided to do a little color scheme test on it just using Photoshop. Um, and then I quickly decided against using purple and green. So instead, I decided on a purplish blue scheme. I figured that the bone spikes on here were going to be a nice warm bone color, so I wanted a cool color to kind of contrast the skin. So with that color scheme in mind, let's move over to the priming. Here is a miniature mostly assembled and magnetized. I couldn't show the process of adding magnets to this figure since I did this all a month ago and it's been sitting on my shelf ever since. There are many tutorials out there on YouTube already on how to magnetize your miniatures, but if you want to know how I do it, let me know down below. As you can see here, I'm using Vallejo Black Primer to get a nice even coat over all the pieces. I'll make about two or three passes to get a nice even coverage. Then I'll use both gray and white primer to finish off the zenithal highlight. When I'm doing this, I'm keeping in mind the viewing angle which you would see this miniature, uh, which you can see from this picture here, just straight on. So most of my white primer is going to go towards highlighting that front area. Once that dries, we'll move on to base coating. Starting from the bottom up, I'll mix together a bit of Nagroth Night and Incubi Darkness to push the shade towards the blue scale. Then in a reverse zenithal method, which I guess you can call ned nadural? I don't know. We'll airbrush the shadows here. Next, I'll add some Temple Guard blue to the mix and place my highlights. This blue color will end up being the main color of the skin. Notice how I'm not touching the chest or the belly area with the airbrush. We'll be taking care of that later. So let's move on to the bone spikes. In a similar fashion to how we did the Lord of Malice's skin, we're going to stair separate away towards a brighter color. We're going to start with Rhinox Hide, 
then add increments of Screaming Skull to the mix until we get the color that we want. So starting off, I am using Rhinox Hide and just covering all the bone spikes on the body, save for the chest and for the stomach. Now that all the bone spikes are base coated, let's paint the chest. So my goal here was to make the stomach and the chest brighter that kind of draw your eye towards it. So what I did is mix my shadow color, Nagroth Knight, and added small amounts of pallid witch flesh and airbrush it on, making sure it was getting brighter and brighter towards the chest and on the belly. Once that was all dry, I went ahead and base coated all the bone spikes on the chest and on the stomach. So now that's done, let's go ahead and finish up all the bones. So originally I wanted a more layered effect with the bones, as you can see on the screen here. However, I felt that effect was pretty jarring, especially on the shoulder spikes. So I decided just to smooth them out and kind of blend our way up to our bone color. So it was at this point that I started working on both the heads and both weapons. Uh, since that's for a different video, let's go ahead and skip to the wings. So with both the wings and the base, I didn't want them to have any weight in terms of what you'd be focusing on on the miniature, so I decided to keep those pretty basic and let them fall to the background. For the bone spikes on the wings, I went ahead and just airbrushed and Rhinox hide and then highlighted that with Screaming Skull using the airbrush as well. Admittedly, I could have put another coat of Screaming Skull on the wingtips at this point, uh, but I didn't really catch that until after the whole miniature was complete. So before gluing the wings on, I attached them with some blue sticky tack, uh, just to see how the wings looked in comparison to the miniature. I looked at it in different lighting, uh, just to see if everything kind of matched up. And I decided at this point, yeah, I could use some more Temple Guard Blue, so I went ahead and applied that with an airbrush. So now that the wings are complete, let's go ahead and finish up the base. So just like with the wings, I wanted to keep the base pretty basic. I didn't want it to take away from the miniature itself. So all I did here was mix some Incubi Darkness with some Storm Vermin Fur and use that as my base coat, and then add a little bit of Miniature Gray to use as a highlight. Once the base was dry, I added the figure to it just to kind of gauge where everything was looking so far. And it was at this point that I realized that I needed to add a pretty big drop shadow. So I added some black acrylic ink to my airbrush and made a drop shadow. So that pretty much does it for the first part in the series on how I painted the body, the wings, and the base. Uh, next time I'll go over how I painted the head and the weapon, so please subscribe to my channel to keep an eye out for that. And also be sure to check out my social media on the screen and join the Discord if you'd like to hang out. Link to that is down below. And if you want me to paint something or if you want a tutorial over a specific thing, just let me know. I'll probably end up doing it. And of course, a huge thank you goes out to my patrons, Lenore, Andy, Samantha, Hugh, and Mark for all of your support. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. And as always, take care and happy painting.